videos are not like this magical thing, all right? We're just shooting the clips, so then I can post them on my YouTube and Facebook. Yes? Do you write the notes on the warm-up sheet? Uh, yes, you can just keep your notes and your uh, warm-ups all the same. Because pretty much it's all the same, just essentially notes. So what I like to do is work with showing you guys how to find the domain, actually the implied domain uh, for this problem. When we talked about domain and range earlier, we talked about you know domain is going to be your set of all your input values. It's going to be your set of all your x values and your uh, dependent values. So when we're looking at a graph and we want to determine what the domain and range are, a good kind of rule of thumb, if you guys remember with that x squared, when we talked about this one as uh, you know x squared plus 2x plus 1, we talked about what this graph looks like. That's a nice parabola. And what we said was the domain is going to cover all the x values. Well, as this as this parabola keeps on expanding and you know continuing up, it's going to cover all of my x values. It's going to go all the way left, all the way right to negative infinity and to positive infinity. So the domain is going to be all real numbers. Now, what we want to do is we want to say, well, if you guys can always kind of assume it's always going to be all real numbers, except for we need to look at where is our domain going to violate. Uh, a mathematical rule. So what are some things where our x value, we can't plug in a certain x value, where we can't have, um, where our x value is not going to make sense. So there's two times that uh, we're going to violate some math rules. One of those is if we divide by zero. Because can we divide by zero? No. no. You can't divide by zero. So that is when you know if you have an x and it equals zero on the bottom, that can't be a part of your domain because you can never have a zero on the bottom. Mr. McLogan? Yes? Can you tell me how many students you have in your class right now? I have 21. Thank you. So, the next thing that we're looking up here is, uh, <clears throat> so we have, we know we can't divide by zero. Then the other thing we know we cannot have, you guys remember imaginary numbers, is you also can't have a value that's um, negative under a root, correct? So if we always think of, when we're looking at a, a graph, we say, all right, the domain is all real numbers except for any x value that makes a, gives us a zero on the bottom or any x value that gives us a negative under the root. Those are the only, those are the only two numbers that we're going to exclude from our domain. So when I look at h of x equals 10 divided by x squared minus 2x, I don't have a radical, so I'm not going to worry about that. But when I say, all right, I know... I cannot, it's all real numbers, except I know there cannot be a zero on the bottom. So I need to figure out what numbers will give us a zero on the bottom. So what we do is we write an equation, we say zero equals x squared minus 2x. And the reason why I write zero equals x squared minus 2x is I want to figure out what value gives me zero. So you write, so you make the, write an equation. Here I look at it and say what can be factored out. Since they both share an x, I'm going to factor out an x. Then, now I have this as a set of linear factors. So I can say x equals 0 or x minus 2 equals 0. Either one of, whichever one of those is going to give me a 0. So 0 equals x or x minus 2 equals 0. Then I solve for x here. And I can either say, well, when x equals 0 or when x equals 2, for either one of those, that's going to give me 0 for my um, function. Sorry. That's going to give me zero on the bottom. It's just the computer's battery. Does that make sense? So therefore, when I write, when I write my domain, it's all real numbers except x cannot equal zero here and x cannot equal two because when x equals two or it equals zero, that's going to give me a zero on the bottom. Does that make sense? Uh, so you're like solving for like what's instead of solving for what is x, you're solving for what is not x. Is that what you're saying? What I'm doing is, got if you plugged in zero, right? Plug zero into this equation. Zero squared is zero minus two times zero is what? Zero. So then your equation is ten divided by zero. Is that possible? No. So therefore, zero is not a part of the domain. If I plug in a two. 2 squared is 4. four. Minus 2 times 2 is 4. 4 minus 4 is 0. Therefore, 2 cannot be a part of the domain. 
All other numbers, negative 5, 15, 3.87. All other numbers work. No other number makes it zero on the bottom. Those are the only two numbers that make it zero on the bottom. So therefore, they're not a part of our domain. Does that make a little bit more sense? Yeah. So when you're working with something that's a rational um, function like this, set your bottom equal to zero and find out what those two values are. Because what those two values are, are not going to be a part of your domain. Oh, so it could have been like, like it could have been like this. Oh, 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 oh. So you, what you're saying is just switch around so x is on the bottom of the denominator, right? What do you mean x is on the bottom? Uh, you just said, you just said sum of that. I said, <laughs> yes, you don't want to have zero on the bottom. Yeah. So what we want to do is we want to figure out what values make zero on the bottom. So that's why I set my bottom equal to zero. Okay, so um, you know, you just take a look at you say we can't have zero on the bottom, so you set it equal to zero to solve for what values will give you zero on the bottom. Yes. What happens to the third x when you take it from x squared negative two x to the second step? Because there's x squared and then there's the extra x behind negative two. The factor. <laughs> oh, you mean from here to here? Yeah. What I did was I factored out the x. So if I was to multiply this back again, x times x would give me x squared. And then x times negative 2 would give me negative 2x. So I just took it all back out. Hey ma'am, any last questions on this? Is that the yes. same with ones that do not have a fraction? Like can, like, um, like number 60, I set that equal to 0? What's number 60 have on the bottom? Um, nothing on the bottom. Well, if there's nothing on the bottom, then it, then this case doesn't apply. Because it's only when you have a rational only when you have a rational expression are you going to be worried with being, it being zero on the bottom. But if there's nothing on the bottom, then we're not, we're, we don't care about dividing by zero because we can't. Okay. All right? So we'll do some more examples in there. Can you just, do one like 60? Yep, absolutely. If you guys are looking at it, just remember to set your bottom equal to zero and solve.